Hello and thank you for joining this demonstration of the HP Storage Works P2000 Remote Snapshot Software feature. Before we get started with the demonstration, I just want to cover a few key points here. This is utilizing HP's first entry-level controller-based replication software. The remote snap is asynchronous and it's controller-based replication. That process is based on snapshot functionality. These deployments include across geographic distances, utilizing Ethernet or across campuses over fiber channel. The copies are only changed blocks, so that makes the process extremely efficient. Remote snap is a pull-out operation, so the remote site will be pulling the information from the primary site. This does require a network connection between two P2000 G3 arrays, and it utilizes HP's exclusive ease-of-use content with a replication wizard. As we get started with this demo, we're going to launch the SMU by providing the P2000 IP address that was set up during initial configuration of the array. Then we're going to log into the SMU and rename the P2000 arrays for easier identification. First, we'll log into the primary site with its IP address that we configured. Then, as we make the connection to the storage management utility, we'll log in. Here, we're going to use the default username and password. And now as the data is collecting, we'll see the configuration information populate over here on the left-hand pane. We're going to go ahead and select the primary array, and we're going to give it its identification now. So we're going to select the system name, and we're going to name it Local Array. Okay, now we're going to save out that configuration. And now we're going to click the tab over to the destination array. This will be the array that we're replicating to. We're going to log in to the same default username and IP address here. And following the same procedure, we'll go over to the left-hand column and we'll choose where the system name will be and we're going to give this the system name of our remote destination. We'll call this Remote Array. Okay, that information saved. Now we can see if you look at the top, we've got two tabs for our local array and our remote array. We'll be switching between these two periodically. The next step in the demo will be to create a virtual disk at both the local and the remote P2000 arrays. Then we'll create a volume and map it to a host from the source P2000. And then finally, we're creating a data file on the local host, and this will be the data that we'll replicate to the remote array. So first, let's create that virtual disk on the source P2000. We're going to select a couple of drives from our disk group here and put them into a RAID 5. Okay, that's complete. And now we're going to take the virtual disk that's created, that RAID 5, and we're going to put, we're going to create a volume from that V disk. So we'll type in 25 here for a 25 gig volume that we're going to enable and then save that configuration. Now we've got a 25 gig drive that'll be available for mapping. So we'll go down, we'll see the 20, 25 gig volume here. We're going to map this to the host. We'll just call that host1 here. Okay, so we see our name is source1 and we've got the 25 gig volume. We're going to give it a 1 ID of 78 and then OK. We've got that volume created. And now we're going to come back here to the left-hand pane, and we're going to see that we've got that source volume mapped. And we're going to come over to our Disk Management tool. We see that the volume is now in our Disk Manager. We're going to go and create a partition and format that volume. We'll name this one Source for easier identification later on. Okay, now you can see this volume is formatting, and it's a relatively quick process here, and now we're done. 
We've got our driver. We've got our driver letter, and now we can actually go put some data on. So we're going to go back to our host. We're going to open up our Disk Explorer utility, and we're going to create a small folder here, and then a small text file within that folder. And we'll name this as source, and it's just going to be a text file. We'll open up that text file, and we'll just call it source data. Okay, we've saved that. Now this is our primary array. So now what we want to do is go over to the remote array, and we're going to now create that virtual disk. Now this virtual disk needs to be the same size or larger. And this will be the container, essentially, that we'll use to replicate that data. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take three drives from this remote array, put it into a simple RAID 5. Now that we've got the source and destination virtual disks created and the data created, let's follow the five-step replication setup wizard to initiate the replication process. Okay, we're going to come to the local array, and now we're going to go to the wizard's icon and select the replication wizard setup, and we'll see that the sources are already punched in for us. We're going to do remote replication and now type in the IP address of the remote P2000. Okay, and this will enable us to now go and discover that remote P2000. So we're going to type in the login credentials. And now we're going to go out on the wire. We're going to discover that remote P2000. It's obtaining the volume information that we've got out there now. Okay, so now we've got the arrays negotiating the virtual disk information. And we're verifying that remote connection. We're using the iSCSI link for this exercise, so we want to make sure we choose the correct interface type. And that can be verified in this table you see here. So that completes step 5. We'll go ahead and click Finish. And now we've established the replication set for the source of volume. We can see now that that's successful. So now if we come back over here to the left, actually we're going to replicate the volume now. So we're going to go ahead and hit Apply. And what we're going to see here in the left-hand pane is that the replication set is established, and that will give us the option to next export the volume, and we'll see that here in the next step. Okay, so we've got the replication volume now enabled to run. We see the replication images here. Now we're going to go replicate that volume. You can see by the arrow the progress indicating that we're replicating that data now between the source and the destination array. And now we see that the process is complete. Now that the snapshot replication is complete, the next exercise will be to export the replication image using our export snapshot feature. That allows us to map the snapshot to a host, and then we can verify the data that we replicated over to the remote site. OK, in this section here, we can go down to the replicated images, and we'll highlight the replicated image, go to Recording, and export snapshot. And we're just going to give this snapshot a name of remote array snap. Okay, we're now exporting that array. That's now complete. So this gives us an image now that we can mount on our remote P2000. So we go down under our snapshots tab. We find the snapshot that we just exported. And now we're going to mount that snapshot to our host. So we'll select the snapshot that we just renamed, calling it Remote Array Snapshot. We're going to give it a LUN phonetic number, and we're going to check the iSCSI features here so that we're viewing this over the correct paths. And now we can see that the host mappings are now complete. We'll click OK. And now we'll come over to the Mappings feature. Okay, we're going to come back to our Disk Manager now. And now we see that the volume is available in our Disk Management Utility. We're going to assign that a LUN, a drive letter now.
All snapshots will always come up as a blank partition. We're going to assign a drive letter, and then once that drive letter is assigned, we'll be able to access that data. Remember, because this is a snapshot, we don't actually have to format this partition. So now, we'll go to our My Computer, look at the Source folder, and here is the source text file that we created on the source array and successfully migrated to the remote P2000. For more information on the P2000 and its features and benefits, please visit our website at www.hp.com slash go slash P2000. You can also get more information on the remote snap feature as well as the FC and iSCSI combo array controller. There's also a number of white papers listed on this web page, and please be sure to follow us on Twitter as well. That's twitter.com slash MSA storage. Thanks for joining us.